Hi guys, welcome to Social Anxiety Inside Out. This is session 24. And just to remind you what these Hangouts are about, um, if you haven't been here before, welcome. Um, if you're a regular viewer, welcome as well. Uh, these Hangouts are a different way to look at social anxiety and well-being and you know stress, anything related to um, you know things that stop us in our lives. And every week we have different guests on and we discuss um, what's known as the three principles and how um, briefly how I how I would describe the three principles is a a way to explain our experience our experience of life um, you know there's mind thought and consciousness um, mind is basically the life force uh, that's in all of us you know it's um, It's just the the energy behind life, if you like, and uh, we all know what thought is, but we don't really know how important it is in you know creating our reality of life. And and there's also the third principle of of consciousness, and you know our consciousness um, is basically our our awareness of uh, our life, and through our five senses, we basically um, put the focus on whatever's going on in our thoughts and that becomes our, our view of life and we're, we're going to be discussing that more throughout the session and there'll be an opportunity for you guys to ask any questions uh, to the three of us. <clears throat> so my special guests today are Steve Adair, psychotherapist and free principles facilitator and also Tommy Erlausen who is a performance coach, a sports coach, and also a free principles practitioner facilitator as well. So uh, welcome, guys. Thanks for coming on tonight. How are you doing? Thank you. It's, it's great to be here. I'm doing great. Thank you for having us as your guest, Steve. My pleasure. So by the way, this is Tommy here. Give us a wave, Tommy. Sorry? Give us a quick wave so the guys can see who you are. Uh, do you want me to tell tell a little bit about myself? Or? <laughs> I, was just, I was just saying give a quick wave to the camera just to say hello. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is Steve Adair. Give us a quick wave, Steve. <laughs> so just to start things off, guys, I just wanted to you to say a little bit about yourself so um, you know a bit about your background and uh, a bit about how you come across the three principles and how it's how it's been helping you and, and others so uh, Steve did you want to want to go first sure sure um, well since 1991 I have been working to help people understand themselves better in whatever way, shape or form, but it's all been looking at the, the psychological and the spiritual. Um, and for those who have, have watched the, the Google Hangouts before, um, when Tony, Tony Feedley used to do them with you, then I'm Tony's business partner. So I heard the principles through um, after Tony going to an actual training in London. And by the time that I had heard about the principles then, I was at a space in my life that I was very full of therapies, of anything like that to, to get people um, well. And so when Tony would start coming and telling me um, about these wonderful things called the three principles, then I just wasn't interested in, in hearing. So for me, I was a little bit of a... Um, a rebel at the beginning because I just wouldn't go there. But what I started seeing was the changes in Tony as some of the things surrounding a work environment that he was in when he was a manager at that time was that some of the things that would bother him before hadn't changed, the circumstances didn't change, but his whole attitude towards the circumstances changed. And that really perturbed me, that really got me thinking, huh, what's this about? 
because here's the same thing still happening, yet his reaction is very different, and he's actually okay. There was like a, a really sense of peace there. So that got me interested, and then long story short, he asked me did I want to go to Canada, and I always wanted to go there, so he knew, I guess, what the answer would be, and my idea of going there was that there was training going to be going on by Elsie Spittle and Chip Chipman, and we would go there, do it, and then spend time in Vancouver, and that was more what I was up for. That's what I thought at the time, because when I went along to the school, I still don't really know to this day what I, I heard. All I know was that there was such a profound feeling in that space that I heard from a different place. I heard from a place that was familiar, but yet I had forgotten about. And that space really began to wake up again when I was listening to what Elsie and Chip were saying. Now, when I say I don't really know what they were talking about, I knew they were talking about thought, about consciousness and mind, but the feeling more overtook anything that I was listening to. And at the end of the, the first break, I say to Tony, I'll be back in a minute, walk up to Elsie and says to her, I don't know what we're, you've been talking about here, but I have just come home. And that shocked me. Because here was me going over there and not really interested in these three principles, just hanging out in Canada. And here I was saying, I've just come home. And any thinking I started having was just washed away by this feeling. So I goes back to my chair and Tony says, what did you say to Elsie? And I was back in personal thought then and it was, I'm not telling you, because I couldn't believe it myself. I didn't really know what this thing I had said about. I knew the feeling because it was there from an early age, but I didn't understand it in that present moment. But within five, ten minutes of, of having that experience, we'd gone out for lunch. And I'd say this to him, I don't know what happened there, but I'm going to share these principles for the rest of my life, which confused me even more at the beginning because here was me, I didn't really understand what they were. And to be truthful, I don't know if I truly understand what they are at an intellectual level now. But what I understand was this feeling of coming home was just a metaphor to explain the experience available to every single person, moment to moment, of their life. And home is something that is a place of safety, it's a place of protection, it's a place of certainty. Whatever kind of human names that we want to put to it, but it really is given to each person but a beautiful, serene feeling that holds such a knowing that any human thinking that we have cannot get in the way of it when it really brings us into action. So for me, that's what woke me up. That's what really got me interested in these. From not to completely, I want to learn more. And the other three days that we had on the, the island, I was completely in awe of, again, not truly really understanding what I was hearing, but the feeling that I was happy to go with. And then the year following, Tony and I went out to do fellowship training with Chip and Elsie and Jan Chipman. And that's where we were delighted to meet Tommy, who's doing the call with us. So we spent wonderful seven weeks together on Salt Spring, where we were in fellowship, just really hanging out and just really getting to more understand this feeling behind the human experience which directs us all. Are you talking, Steve? Uh, I can't hear anyone talking. No, I can't hear you either, Steve. <clears throat> uh, 
I could hear you perfectly, Steve Adair, but I can't hear Steve Light. So <laughs> I wonder if you should maybe tell your story while we're waiting on <laughs> Yeah, that, that that's, sounds like a plan. <laughs> Let's share my little story in some <laughs> words. <laughs> it's nice to see you again, Steve. <laughs> well, well, my my, my story uh, tonight is um, my my background is that I'm I was uh, playing football for twenty seven years and. Um, Many of those years, I had uh, injuries and and a lot of pain in, in in my body, and 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 that made me search for um, health. I, I wanted to be cured from my injuries because my colleagues and my friends and my teammates they they didn't have the injuries as I had. So, as a 19-year-old. Um, I started with a massage therapy education, and uh, and that helped me a little bit. But it also started to give me more questions about how the body was functioning. So I studied to a personal trainer, to a nutritionist, and um, and I was feeling better. I was feeling better, and uh, it was some ease of my injuries, but. At the same time, I had this desire, you know, to 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 come back and to play on the professional level. So I just wanted to have more knowledge. Um, so I did medicine studying for two years, and then I started to osteopath for for another five years, and I started postural therapy and energy psychology, and it just went on. And from for, from from every diploma I got. I just never got satisfied. I just wanted the next diploma and the next diploma and the next diploma. And at the at the age of 30, 32, I was still searching, you know, for my for my health. I, my body was okay, and I, I I finally quit playing soccer. And but I had this empty space inside of me. I I didn't feel fulfilled in my life. It 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 felt like something is missing. And uh, and the best way I could do was to search for it somewhere else. And then one day uh, a friend of mine that came in touch with the principles, I could see him in, in him that he was doing the same thing. Like he was really searching. But one day when I met him, he was very <laughs> He, he looked at, at such an ease of life and, and had so much joy in him, just with the presence. So I asked him, like, what have you done? Why are you so calm? And why, why, why are you so happy? And, and we started to have conversations about life. And, and, and then he mentioned the principles and, and a guy called Sidney Banks that had an insight in the 70s about life. And uh, I look up on the internet and I search for Sidney Banks and, and I could see that he, he wasn't alive anymore. But I found a clip with him. And the first thing he said on this clip was that my principles are getting lost. Or the principles are getting lost because people is mixing their old understanding with their new understanding. And I've seen that so many times in the therapy that People are mixing their old with the new, and, and it gets a good result, but not as good as it could be. So I got curious, and, and I emailed Elsie and Chip on the island, uh, because Sid said that they are going to take over the school. Uh, and I had this strong feeling inside of me, both from what I saw in my friend and, and the place Sid and Elsie and Chip were speaking from. Uh, on these clips and and then I just booked my tickets and and flew over to to Salt Spring Island and uh, joined them for a weekend and what I loved when I arrived was that uh, 
they presented it so easy. You know, from studying medicine, that, that's quite hard to study all the cells and disease and that, that's a lot of knowledge. And the first thing they said was, when you come here tomorrow, please don't bring anything. No books, no pencils, no computers, nothing. Just show up. Because what we're going to talk about, you will never understand it anyway. <laughs> And that resonated with me because after 15 years of studying the body of knowledge, the only thing I was sure I knew was that I didn't know anything. So the next day I showed up and uh, listened to them and they was talking about life and I actually didn't understand so much what they were talking about. My English was fresh. and But the, the feeling in the room was awesome to, to see them and and to the other people that was pres presenting in the room it was such a nice place just to be around them and just to be in the room and uh, after the day i went up to my to my hotel room and just reflecting over what they were saying that we have this health within we don't have to search anywhere and and this this inner intelligence is, is doing everything it can to help us in the moment to to be alive and to be healthy and to enjoy and when I look back in my life or on my searching trip my anxiety my my worries my insecurity I just heard this little, little voice speaking inside my head that whatever you are searching for, the happiness is within you. You're born happy. And that is the most precious moment in my life. It, it, just, it, it just opened up a totally new world for me. From, from searching, 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 reading all these books, all these hours from 6 in the morning to 10 in the evenings, all the travelings. And finally, I could hear myself seeing, like really seeing that what I was searching for in the books, it's just inside my heart. I'm born with it. And, and that made all the difference in the world for me. That was wonderful, Tommy. So, uh, can you guys actually hear me this time? We can, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, um, yeah and what I was saying before, Steve, that I, I've heard your story many times, but every time I hear it, I just hear something new, and it's, it's such a wonderful story. Um, and I wanted to... Um, I wanted to ask you guys, because... You know, we talk about this, that um, you have health inside you and, um, you know, we talk, the title of this um, uh, this hangout is relating to wisdom. So, Steve, I just wanted to ask you, how, how do we rediscover, in your own words, that, you know, we're actually okay underneath all of the insecurities and the the anxieties we you know we all get from our upbringings or you know just by being in life how how do we get access to that Steve the, the wisdom underneath all of that you know the, the I I've heard Tommy share before and and each time he says about the realization, the personal realization that he didn't have to search for happiness, that he actually was born happy. Now that gets me each time because there's truth. Every single one of us is born with an inner knowing. And if you look at the innocence of children, the fresh thinking that they have, the playfulness that they have, 
And even though it's not an only eyes and I know everything that I need to, there is still an eagerness to want to get to know the surroundings and to be happy. And to me, that's something that the principles began to show me, that it wasn't just something, when I uncovered that understanding that I've just come home, what that taught me, that, that, that there is, the way the human experience is created, it's the same for everyone. And we're gifted with these three principles. Now the principles are not a thing that we have to learn. It's something that we actually are. The why I love what Tommy was sharing was that for me, the same as Tommy, my searching stopped because I was searching in the wrong direction. I was trying to fix something that wasn't broken. And the more I tried to fix it, the weaker the superglue got, which meant that I was trying to repair the same thing over and over, which means that I was superimposing more insecurities, more inadequacies onto what already I believe was broken. So through the principles, what I begin to understand is that I simply was get lost in my thinking. And the more that I did that, the more all I got was more thinking. Because that's the way the human psychological experience by the ego and our intellect is created. Once I recognized that, that's when I started notice something changing. And that's where I see other people where it starts. It's not how do I fix myself, it's where is this experience coming from? What's behind my experience? Because I'm sure yourself, Steve and Tommy, and everyone listening to this, there has been moments where clarity has been so profound. And it's in those moments that we see ourselves at our best. I had an experience last week where I'd gone away up to the Lake District with some friends. And it was very foggy. And I mean really dense fog that you couldn't see in front of you. And I was sitting there amazed by the scene that I couldn't see. And I started getting thinking, you know, that's a little bit like when we get stuck in thinking, where we just lose ourselves, that all we become is, oh my goodness, are we going to crash? Oh my goodness, is this going to be safe? And the amount of things that we build on, I can't see anything, should I slow down, should I go faster, should I put all the thinking that we start building up, that we forget that we're still driving forward, we're still going through the experience, and then all of a sudden, it cleared. Three minutes down the, the, the line, I started laughing. I remembered we were stuck back in th um, the fog. And that's the way the illusion of our nature and how it works, that when we become stuck in our thinking, it's the only thing that we see. We forget that inside every single one of us is the ability to create fresh thinking, not we're the creator, this intelligence creates it. And what it does is it gives us space. You know when the sun shines behind clouds, and then you just see that little bit of light, and you think, oh, the sun's coming out. That's what it's like between the illusionary nature of thought to our personal stuck in it, due to the insight-based learning that the principles point us back to. In that place, we realize that who we are is enough. In that place, we recognize that what we're feeling is the consciousness of who we truly are whether the fog thinking is who we've made up. So it's not that we have to understand, so the next time I get into fog, Steve, what do I have to do? You recognize that even though I went through the fog, I was okay. I came out the other side. And any apprehension, I created that. Because the other people in the car weren't having the same experience as me. Once I started recognizing that, the empowerment that it brought back to me, that I'm the driver of my own thinking. I know behind my experience is the intelligence behind all things. And because it's a spiritual intelligence, 
And that simply means that it's a formlessness. It's to explain the formlessness behind life. What that does is bring clear vision but from the inside out. And the more that we understand that it's inside us, that's when the empowerment begins to come back to us. That's when our focus begins to change. Because we see what we're actually doing flowing from wisdom, rather than what we're doing to get away from ourselves. So it's really a different way of psychologically understanding who we are, coming from insight-based learning. Wonderful, Steve. Thank you. Um, Tommy, did you did you want to add anything to that? Yeah. Every every time I I get on the air here with with Steve, it's so refreshing. You know, you you show up from your your daily life and and sometimes you get caught up in your thinking and it's so easy to to be in your head uh, and instead of being in your heart and to see life for what it actually is I was uh, exercising last night and uh, it was very dark, so it was it was very difficult for me to see where I was moving. But my my sensitivity was very aware, and I I, I just heard something playing in in the forest and in the grass. It might be a mouse or a frog or something, but I it it it, it took my time, and I I just wanted to see what it was. So I was standing there and just trying to see something and from nowhere this big black cat just shows up and and take whatever it was. And it hit me that it's so easy to to try to see something in life or try to understand something or analyze yourself and get caught up in in the illusion of thought instead of like it should be in the nature that to be aware to be open and to to see what's what's in the moment in order to survive and it hit me that it could you know something just could show up and and take me away because i was so caught up in thinking like what's there what's over there and It was a really eye opener in that moment to to see my thinking very fresh. And uh, as I said every time when I listen here to when Steve talks, it's I always just fall out of my thinking and and back into the present moment. It's it's really beautiful to to be part of the sharing, to have this conversation and and to deepen my own grounding of life and to listen to other people and their experience and and to see the spirit of their love com coming out. Thank you, Tommy. That was, that was wonderful. Um, I'm I'm getting more and more a sense of what you're pointing to. This, um, you know, this is session 24 that we've done so far, and. From the very beginning, when I heard you share, Steve, you know, I got I got a sense of knowing what you were talking about. Um, but as as my deep as my understanding has deepened over this this period of time, I it seems I'm experiencing it more and more, and it it kind of gives me more of a belief in it because you can. You know, we can share about this stuff forever, and um, 
it's kind of up to us as individuals, uh, not that we choose when we get it, but just um, I, d I just see that there's a big difference between you know saying that's that's a nice idea and I can see that uh, as opposed to really feeling it and experiencing it, and. Um, you know, the start of this hangout was quite, um, I was quite anxious, I guess. Um, uh, we're trying to get Steve on the hangout and he was having trouble connecting and I was getting a bit worried and I had a different level of awareness of the anxiety um, and it still felt like anxiety. It was a familiar feeling which I had spent a lot of my life experiencing. Um, but the, the anxiety didn't grip me like it used to. It's like um, it's kind of like observing it rather than being in it. So I'm kind of aware that it's going on but it's not um, it's not consuming me and um, looking back what I'd do in the past is you know feel anxious and judge myself feeling anxious and that would bring a whole raft of thoughts and feelings piled on top and it would just it would just spiral and I'd get more stressed and more wound up and and then I can see, you know, I'd be so wound up, I'd, I'd feel like blaming it on someone else or, you know, not really aware of what's going on in my mind and, you know, someone saying something to me and I'll take it the wrong way and get, um, get defensive and it's really powerful when you get, even if you get a very small glimpse of awareness of what we're pointing to, you're like, that that is powerful I, that really is powerful because you know so many people go through their whole life and, and can be really gripped by uh, their emotions and and just that little bit of awareness kind of loosens the grip a bit and you know over the past year since I've been looking in this direction it's It's been especially good e over the past week, um, and I, again, I'm not saying that it's, it's great all the time or, you know, I'm happy all the time, but, you know, I had a couple of bad days last week, and then, um, you know, I pulled for it, and then, you know, I knew it was going to be okay, um, and I had a different level of awareness. Uh, when I came out of that and I could see myself getting wound up and it was kind of like a warning system to say you know you know you know that you're doing this and you're winding yourself up by doing this so I kind of took a step back from that and and just close my eyes for a couple of minutes and settle down again. And I just want you guys to get, a, you know, get even the smallest glimpse of the kind of freedom this, you know, look in this direction can give you. I'm not saying that, you know, drop everything else you're doing. You know, you know what's right for you in your um, in your heart deep down um, but, you know a set of these hangouts to help you guys and and I would just say that I feel more as I go along in this journey you can just see these layers of habitual thinking just just not having the power they once had and I just feel so much more comfortable being me not trying to trying to get anywhere or 
or trying to impress anyone or all be jerked around by my thinking. It's it's just the sense of freedom that I want other people to see. Um, so what I wanted to do, guys, is um, we've got a couple of questions in. So um, you know, an anxiety related and. Uh, so the first one, um, if you both could, uh, you know, give your own, give your own views on it, that'd be brilliant. Uh, so this question, uh, this person says, I have nervous sweating when I get anxious, and I'm particularly conscious of it when I socialise with people, and I worry, and I worry what others think of me sweating. I know I need to let go, and I know my negative thoughts of sweating are keeping it going. But I struggle just letting go when I have my anxiety attacks. Um, Steve, did you want to go first on that one? When I was sharing earlier on about um, how I had insight, and when Tommy was sharing how we had insight, that same opportunity, understanding, is available to you also. The more that we begin to look at and give something titles and labels, then what it does is it allows the, the habitual thinking of our symptoms to take place. When Steve, for me, the, the more that I understand these principles, the great thing about it is, is that no one can give you an understanding of the principles. It's something that you hear for yourself and already we've talked about hearing different things from each other on this call and Steve had said that he had heard me speak before but he hears something different so when Steve had just shared what he finds that he goes through now when he says he had bad days I was like oh I used to have them and it really struck me that I don't see my days as being good or bad anymore. That's just my thinking around a situation that I give it a title. And because I've made up all these self-beliefs, each time I have that thought, my ego, my thinking process knows what to attach to it. But the more that I look in the other direction, as in, well, okay, this experience might be something that I might be a little bit uncomfortable about, but I still want to have the experience, just like driving through the fog. Halfway through that experience, I couldn't have turned around and said, I want to get rid of this fog, because even if I had reversed, I was covered by it. So what I did was just was driving along. And it passed. So what I would say to you is, is when it comes to we don't know what other people are thinking. We can only guess. We second guess how everybody is based on our consciousness, understanding, our awareness. And it's more our, I'm sweating, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, that we are reacting to. Other people might not even be noticing. If they do, it's probably not a big deal. But whether we make it in our thinking is a really big deal. So what I would say to you is, is, is just be aware how you're thinking about yourself. Because I bet you no one can give you a more difficult ride in your life than what you give yourself. And that's a thing that we seem to, within a human nature, we all do it. So it's not that we're pointing the finger and saying, oh, you're doing this. Moment to moment, we will go through that experience in different levels. I still go through that experience of every now and again I get caught in my thinking 
But the difference is as soon as I realize that I'm creating this and no one else, I pop out of it just like the fog. And then 15 minutes later, I forget that I was in that place, which means that whatever experience I'm having is much more enriched. That's available to you also. It isn't just my experience, but in you in a different way. So what I would say to you is get to know yourself in a different way. If you're having the experience, it's something that you're creating. And the more that you see that you're not your defining thoughts, but you're actually a wisdom coming within you, that even though you might have the little bit of apprehension, you don't have to become the apprehension thinking. Even though you might be a little bit stressed, you don't have to become the stressful thinking. And I love when Steve was explaining that, that he can still go through the experience, but he doesn't have to become the thinking about the experience. Now there's the space that I mentioned earlier on. And it's this space for us to drop behind our thinking, where we really see that there is nothing that we have to learn because we are these three gifts in action. Even when we're having low quality thinking, as in, what is other people thinking about me? Because I might be perspiring too much. That's still something we're creating. So what I would say to you is, Get to know yourself and hang out with yourself from that place and see what wakes up inside you then. Rather than coming from here, you're coming from your heart. And the more you recognize that that is readily available to you, and some moments like popcorn, you'll get it straight away. And other moments, it might take you five minutes, ten minutes, it might be an hour. But the gift is, is your hearing. That's the difference. The fact that you're sharing with us, you're seeing already how you're playing out. That's fantastic. Don't focus on all the apprehension or the perspiring because you're making a story up then. So that's what I would recommend, Steve, is just to hang out with yourself a little bit more in a fresher space, knowing that wisdom is available to you every single moment. And it's not a wisdom that we're talking about. You have to learn techniques to get over this anxiety. It's saying that there is an insight-based wisdom that allows us to learn moment to moment who we truly are, where there isn't limited self-beliefs locked in there. It's formless, so it doesn't know it. Awesome, Steve. Thank you. I hope that answered your um, answered your question and gave you um, you know a different perspective on it. Tommy, did you want to add something to that, mate? Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love what Steve is pointing to that people should be more nice to themselves, like like more general not taking their their life so serious and, and 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 trying to change their their physiology as as we do and that that is that's a that's a great question because it's it's something i think a lot of people is going around in this world and having thoughts about how their physiology is or how they look or how people behave you know we judge and we analyze so much and what I love about the body is the simplicity we have it you know we, we're born with this body and everything this body is doing for us is to help us. So stress, for example, I was, I had a lot of problems with stress for many, 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 many years. And that came with sweating and I was cold and I was red in my face and uh, I was tense. There was so much coming with, with stress and the word got stronger and stronger and people talk about stress and this survival mode and And I had I started to have seminars, and before the seminars, I was really stressed and very tensed. 
even though I had studied stress and the stress mechanism for, for three or four years, I was still stressed. And that made me even more stressed. <laughs> and one day I had a conversation with a friend. And, and he asked a simple question. What do you think if your stress is helping you? And I looked at him, what do you mean? Yeah, like maybe it's a response that is preparing you for something that's important in your life. And what Steve said here before, I heard him. I didn't look at his words or what he was saying. I truly heard something inside of myself that said, wow, yeah. Maybe stress is actually helping me. So the next seminar I had, I had the same stress response, but this time I looked at it with a totally new eyes. That, wow, I have all this going on in my body. Tensions and, and I'm sweating and it's helping me? Wow. And from there I went out and had a, a, a totally new perspective. And from that moment when I started to see that all the response and all that's going on in my life in, and in my body is somehow helping me. So what would I be having stress without analyzing my stress? Without trying to understand my stress? What would I be then? It's, it's just a physiological process going on and helping us all the time. It's just a natural state in the moment for people that is, is sweating. It's helping them to be alive. And, and to try to make it go away, it won't happen. It won't. Not that way. Someday it might, but not by being, judging yourself or being angry at yourself or being frustrated about the physiology. That will never help. Thank you, Tommy. Again, thank you for asking that question. I hope it, I hope it helped um, in some way. Please send your feedback in. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got a. We have had a few questions, but I don't think we have time to to answer them all. Um, I picked this one because it. Um, I know you guys would be great at answering it, and it's something that. Um, You know, I can relate to you uh, to, to some extent, I guess, as well. Um, uh, the question says, I seem to have got worse since learning about the three Ps. I can be really concentrate, confrontational with loved ones, friends, work colleagues. I know where my thinking comes from, yet I'm still getting irritated. Um, what I'd say to that and what I hear from that is um, that's great that you've got the awareness that, that it is coming from your thinking um, and and I can I can totally relate to that I, I still get irritated about um, not understanding it and uh, the two days I had last week I was thinking um, does any of this make sense and um, but then then I caught myself and realized you know I'm just I'm in a low mood at the moment and I was trying to analyze why that was and trying to trying to get out of it but um, I don't know my my gut feeling is saying uh, you know, be kind to yourself and you know, give yourself a break and 
um, who maybe just um, you know give yourself a, a period of time not looking um, at any free principles material. That's that's just something I I found like saying because that's that's what I did. Um, uh, just over a year ago, when I first found out about this, I was, you know, I was talking with people about it online and watching videos and desperately trying to search for the what it was and you know trying to grasp this thing and uh, I was getting irritated and more stressed out. So I just gave myself a couple of weeks off and just and just lived life. But I see that. If I look back over the past year, I've had you know periods like that, but you know, I'm I'm confident that you've had a, a sense you've seen something in this, because um, I know that you've had calls with people, um, and yeah, I'd love to hear more about what you have seen, and maybe by you sharing that, your You'll get a sense of why you're why you are looking in in this direction. Um, what were your thoughts, Steve? Did you did you get the gist of the question? Do you want me to read it again? Yeah, you can just read. Just, yeah, please. Okay, I seem to have got worse since learning about the three P's. I can be really confrontate confrontational with loved ones, friends, work colleagues, etc. I know where my thinking comes from, yet I am still getting irritated. You know, when I, I know where my thinking comes from, that jumped out at me. That was something that I heard in there. And what, what I heard was there is a wonderful um, saying that, that Sid says, there's knowing, then there's knowing. There's seeing, then there's seeing. And that's really where we begin to see the form and the formlessness acting together. On a, a form level, a thinking level, a personal level, I think at times that I know what these principles are, but I don't think on that level any one of us will ever know what they are. When, we, when I hear myself say, well, I know it's my thinking. I don't. All I just know is the feeling that I'm having. If it's apprehension, anxiety, or whatever, lets me know that there's thinking going on. It isn't a thing that we have to understand. And it doesn't mean that just because we think that we have a small bit of understanding that we know the, the principles. Because it's saying that all I know is, is my limited self-belief thinking. I know everything about that. And even that surprises me at times, the kind of thoughts that I have. So what I would say is, there is the knowing, but the knowing comes from the formless energy. And I believe every moment, because the principles direct us to look at life as being in the power of now. Now. Now, every second, there is fresh potential coming to us in a space where there's limitless potential, which means that we do not know what that is until it shows up. So that's how when insight comes and leads us in a different direction, when we think life is going one way, then all of a sudden, we're off in a different direction. That's because we've been truly in tune with who we are, truly who we are. And when we're coming from that place, we don't have anything where we pop at other people. We don't have any thoughts which is going to make us think that the world is a horrible place, or I'm anxious, or I'm thinking this. Because it doesn't belong in that place. Like I said earlier on, there is no, it's not that we have, in that place there isn't any negative thinking. When we're coming from our spiritual wisdom, it's a space where we're allowed to see ourselves fresh. Sidious virgin mind, fresh thinking, a blank canvas, whatever you want to call it. And in that moment, we see everyone fresh because we're hearing it within ourselves. 
so i know for me the more that i see that i'm popping at people or the more that people i'm getting agitated i see i'm off balance i'm taking my personal thinking a little bit too serious that's all nothing more or nothing less and the more i see that the more it allows me to pop out of it quicker the more it allows me to be in the experience of who i really am coming from my heart and not my personal thinking and there might be some situations that it's going on and it doesn't mean that that immediately changes outside but it means that how I begin to see it how I begin to show up in my world then I see the thing that people can still play out so I don't want to try and fix the people or make the situation right but I know I can be in a place of allowing it to be in whatever way it's meant to go now that's not just a me thing this is available to every single one of us when we begin to get that sense of knowing the wisdom within the safety it comes with knowing that it's safe to know that we don't know it all we never will because as soon as we move on to the next moment what we knew before was our past so i know when i look back at what i call my past if i define myself by how i was back then i'm staying in bed for a long long time and I know in those moments that I can trap myself in the, the illusion of the past because it's not really happening now. It's only what I make up in my thinking. So I know those gifts are available to every single one of us. And if we start looking at the three principles as something that it's not a thing that we have to learn, it's not a thing it controls us, it's something that we are beautiful from the inside formless spiritual potential out into this world that we're living and the more that we recognize that's our true essence the more that shows up time and time again quicker and quicker and quicker and the more that we see it's all right for people to be stuck in thinking we're not trying to change them and i hope it doesn't come across by any of the listeners that we're saying you have to do this to get there I would never ask anyone to change because we can't make anyone change. That's the difference from traditional way of looking at things as, as in counseling to insight based learning is that the change happens within. So when we give ourselves space and we rest a while, and that could be a second or five minutes. And I used to before take myself off and meditate, and I, I still meditate, but it's sitting down and just listening to music rather than I need to get in the position, I need to do this and I need to do that. I just notice that I am okay because at any moment, wisdom can kick into action. What Tommy was beautifully saying about the body, that is so wise. Everything that we are has been created for us to be the best that we possibly can. And when we start looking in that direction, how can I be the best that I possibly am today? You'll be excited what shows up rather than looking at, I'm stuck in my thinking today. I know where it comes I don't know where our experience comes from, but I know this feeling of love when I feel it. I know this feeling of happiness when I feel it. And it's not from anything outside. It's from everything inside of me. And that's the same as the person asking the question, the same as us on the call of every single being. And when we see that that's all we're really wanting to be, is to be coming from a place of happiness, of love, and that we're the only one that can give it to ourselves, then that means that we naturally give it to others anyway. And that's the greatness of understanding these three principles, or understanding who you truly are. Forget understanding the principles. That's a hobby, uh, something we have to learn. We are them. And if we come from that advantage point every single moment of recognizing our human experience has been designed this way, not to understand how we trap ourselves in thinking or what our thinking does, but to realize that we create it and how we create it. Get excited about that because that's a miracle that we can create life in that way. And I'd love to hear the experiences that you have showing up in your life in that way. Thank you, Steve. Just getting so much from hearing you talk that it's um, I was just thinking about 
you know, I had these two days last week, and then after that, it was like, it was kind of like the floodgates were open, all these, all this fresh new thinking came in, and it was, and it was nice, it wasn't like anything dramatic or huge, it was just like, wow, I can do that, wow, I can do that, wow, I can actually do that, it's like all these things that I didn't think I could do, or, you know, felt that it was impossible because, you know, layers of habitual thinking saying that I couldn't do it. it all these things just started coming up, and I'll give you an example of that. Like on, on those two couple of days, um, you know, I've been running so social anxiety support groups, and I'm, I'm in the process of setting up a social enterprise around that, and had these big plans and then on, on those uh, you know on the on the lower mood days I just didn't believe that I could do any of it I was like what was I thinking I can't do this um, and then when that passed the, the good days um, you know I don't want to say good or bad because they had elements of both but on the general level um, and all these you know all these new thoughts were coming in oh I could do that Oh, I could do that, and it just expanded, and 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 you know we learn as we go along, and we have these insights, and we we can reference those that you know, oh that's happened, and now I can expand on that in the future. Um, well, not expand on it, but that's something that has happened, and you've experienced it, you felt it, and that that's great. That's been great. Um, you know, we've all got access to that. Um, we may have had years of being one way, you know, like I was. I was totally stuck in in the anxiety, and I never thought I'd ever get out. But um, you know, and now look at you. I just, uh, I just feel so relaxed, even compared to when we started doing the hangouts. So like, you probably didn't notice, Steve, but. Um, I found myself talking and sharing, and I'd quickly flick back to Tony. So I'd be like, "Ah, oh, what am I going to say next?" And when, when I get that thought of what am I going to say next, and the panic started to come out, come up, I would just pass it straight to Tony. Um, but now I've realised, you know, sit with, sit with that feeling, and and something comes up, and if it doesn't, it's okay if it doesn't come up as well, isn't it? It's like it's okay not to know what to say. Um, and regardless, Steve, of what was going on for you at that time, you showed up. Mm. Which shows that the anxiety doesn't really take hold of us. It's the thinking. And it's when we take that serious. But you showed up. And that's the joy that I see. There's the health that we point back to. That even though you may have had some drumming or echoing or whatever voice going on inside of your head, your wisdom guided you through that because you showed up. And who knows, that might have been wisdom actually directing you to click it to Tony so that you could sit and be in that space. And when we start seeing that that's how we're constantly showing up, I love this story that, that Tommy was sharing earlier on about when his friend says about the anxiety. What happens if that's wisdom in action? Wow. I was like, oh my goodness, I've heard something similar to that. But I love hearing it again. Because there's moments when I feel stressed. And I used to get the red face that, that Tommy talked about. And I'd get the certain feeling on my arm, oh my goodness, that means that I'm anxious. All my psychotherapy training would come on and tell me I'm in a deep state of anxiety. So I became the anxiety. Because that's what my thinking told me. And when I recognized that's all, but I was still showing up in life. Wisdom was still directing me in ways and guiding me through. Regardless, I, it was up to me where I choose to look. And I give that back to you. When you, Even though you say that, you still were showing up. You were still part of that. And when you start looking at how health has been, your innate health has been in your world, that's when things open up clearer and wider. And the space that we're talking about, that you have that potential to be the best you every single moment. And that's not like, I need to get 10 out of 10 today because I got that all last week. There's no gauge on this. There's just higher consciousness that we go into. There's more purer thoughts, better feelings, clearer feelings. 
Thank you, guys. Um, I'm afraid we're going to have to end now. Um, thank you so much for joining me. It's been it's been brilliant. Um, did you did you want to say anything before we go, Tommy? I know it's just been a pleasure hanging around you tonight, here, guys. I feel awesome. It's been really nice. Thank you. Yeah, me too. I thoroughly enjoyed it, Steve. I I always look forward to when I'm doing something with Tommy because with us uncovering the understanding on Salt Spring Island, it's, there was a really special connection that we all had within the group. But there was something that Tommy and I knew that we would there was a synergy that would bring us to work together when the timing was right. And we've done a few hangouts together, we've done training days together, and it's something in the months and the years to come ahead we know that we'll be continually doing more of really working and guiding ourselves back to wisdom but also sharing with other people. Not how they get there, that's up to them how they get there. But it's something that living life from wisdom is something that's very dear to Tommy and I. So thank you for giving this opportunity to be able to share a little bit of insight. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any other comments, please email them in. And if you see below the video, there's there's an option to uh, to purchase the downloads over the past 24 weeks. We've um, mastered them and uh, turned them into audios because we had a lot of requests to uh, to have these available as audio downloads, so you can you know you can re-listen to these on your MP3 player or iPod or whatever. Um, uh, so we, we've done it as a, um, a open pricing um, format, so you can just pay whatever you feel is right and whatever you can afford. So if you, yeah, if you just look under the video, and um, if there's any other questions, just uh, you know, just enter the um, uh, put it in the the contact form or email questions at socialanxietyinsideout.com. So uh, thank you once again, and I'll see you guys next week.